Right, so that's up and running. Now, the next thing that I am in need of is a side view of a sheep. Maybe something close to this one, I think. Hmm. Not that this is something that's actually viewable by anyone. I wonder if I can... Oh, okay, yep, yeah, it will actually... Maybe? Yes, it will. Right, we have many sheeps. We need to find the sheep that will do what we require it to do. And and that is not flying. I really wish I knew actual breeds of sheep rather than just it's a sheep. Um, but I don't want domesticated sheep. Um, if that will work. right now most of the ones that we know today are incredibly domesticated which means we have had too much messing around with them and breeding them to do what we want them to do same reason that pigs are so long these days is because we want ribs that we bred them to have longer ribs I mean that's relatively close to what I'm expecting it to be, at least in terms of, like, bluff. I mean, if only that that was a profile side view rather than a front view. Because that also would work for what we're after. Um, let's think. Um, I mean, honestly, that is, is essentially this mixed with a sheep that I'm trying to look at, but big. And I do need to actually practice creature design stuff if I want to get better at creature design stuff. And also get pra just practice drawing animals if I want to get better at drawing animals. Therefore, this is a good mix of the two. I mean, that, that's a nice hippo ancestor. It's not a sheep. That one from earlier is probably going to be the the best sort of option that I'm after. It, it's not perfect, but it will have to do. Considering it's just there as like a basic reference. 
It'll be fine. The whole idea of this came from earlier this week. Cheaper and Ginger have been doing a bit of work on their D and D world, We're putting some stuff together. Sort of work out how their world would work. And I jokingly said that, you know, on the planes, you would need a large herbivore. And then I jokingly said, it's a big sheep. Of the name um, Ovis Titanus. Which is why this file's named that. And also why I've upgraded it to Megalo Ovis. Or Megalovis Titanus in the title of this stream. Because it is essentially big fucking sheep. But Megalo and Titanus make it seem like double the big sheep. And the way I'm thinking it's going to be is a similar thing to what bisons are and aurochs are or were. Large like probably sort of eight foot tall at the shoulder just huge beasts that they could grow up to and at the time when i was thinking of this i only had a mouse which is why we have a really really bad scribbly sketch of what i was thinking at the time so what we're actually going to do is fix that First of all, let's get our base colour down. Hey Etsy. I mean, like, I've, we can see like the, the sheet is kind of very, very square. Oh, it would help if I'm on the right layer. And have the right colour selected. The sheep are very, at the moment, very boxy. Which is fine for domesticated things. But, from that massive image that we've got sitting in the middle of the screen, the bison, it's much more of a... like huge shoulders and then a smaller hip. Which is closer to what I'm thinking in terms of this giant sheep. And I'm I've never attempted this before, so this is going to be fucking terrible. I'm giving you fair warning that I'm not a perfect artist, and I've never attempted to design a creature before, other than my own face. So this is gonna get weird. So, I'm thinking it's to be sort of, we've got the large shoulder bit. Yeah, this is going to be fun. It's, it's going to be bad, but it's going to be fun. Which would sort of go, go back. We want, it's going to be quite bulky. And it's essentially going to be a giant bean. Because this is this is Sheepa's ancestor, and we all know that Sheepa is a full of beans. What would also be a useful thing to have, I think, would be if I can get a side profile of a bison as well. Because whilst this picture is beautiful, it, it's not quite. Not quite the angle that would make this easier to do. Yeah, this is the sort of I mean 
my one's not quite right on that in terms of where the head would fit, but that's fine, that can be tweaked. That looks like it might be good enough. I mean, it would be nice if it was it was like the sheep and it was on a, a more uniform background. But then I'm going to have to do a bit of... Um, the removal of this. So we've got just mostly bison rather than grass because we know it's going to be on grassland. Yeah, honestly, we could just leave it as the big bean and that would that would work for sheep as true ancestor. And let's just um, remove the thing that might be a little bit TOS and not draw attention to the fact that I just had a bison penis just in the middle of the screen for so long. I mean... Considering I haven't actually looked at a bison from the side arm for quite some time, it's a relatively close approximation. And yeah, the head would be staying here, so yeah, it is pretty close to what I was expecting it to be. Although it does look like near the back there are a lot more sort of cut off there. But the whole thing with sheep is they're full of wool, so this is mostly probably going to be just a big chunk of wool. Keep bits warm. It looks like from this image, it has some absolutely massive shoulders. They, they do sort of go like this. Which is one of the reasons why, you know, Good beast of burden, massive back. Yeah, it, it, it is a um, a very basic sheep. It's it's just there for a little bit of reference. Not that I'm at the point where I need it yet, but I figured I'd get it ready just in case. And let's see, the, the hip section is actually, if we're sort of following the same body plan, because obviously, I mean, the, the reason I'm doing this Etsy, I think you might have just missed it bef before you popped on, is that earlier this week and some last week, Sheeper and Ginger have been working on their sort of D&D &D world. And they've been working on like the alternate history of how the world worked. So, which races evolved, which ones were created by gods, what the the worlds were like at different, yeah, what the, the like the the continents looked like at different parts of time, so yeah, within like the equivalent of a Pangaea continent, and then sort of them sp splitting up and which areas would be which, and oh yeah, I love that sort of stuff. So I thought yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. It's really fun. And one of the things that was, they were doing, they, they had like an area of forest against an area of plains, which normally you wouldn't have a very distinct sort of like cut, unless someone was going there, like humans were going there and were cutting everything down, or a large herbivore was making sure that no fresh growth of trees could actually grow because you know, they were eating the saplings 
And I posited that, you know, bearing in mind it was cheaper. I was like, what if big fucking sheep? The Ovis or now Megalovis Titanus. The Titanic sheep. The large, big fucking sheep. And I thought, you know, because I, I want to draw more. I want to draw more animals. And I also want to get into sort of like a bit more of the design stuff and do more creature design. Because I do love all the like, speculative evolution. I've been wanting to do more of it since uni. I've just been an idiot and not bothered doing it. So I figured, why not try to draw the big, ta the, the big chunky sheep? And that leads us to today, where we're drawing the big chunky sheep. And I mean, the original image underneath, I'd also kind of like thought, yeah, at some point there's going to be a race of creatures, intelligent creatures on this plane. They're going to want beasts of burden. Oh yeah, this, this is advanced. This is not normally stuff that you would do for D&D. Normally this is the kind of stuff, especially with this that I'm doing, it's the kind of stuff you would do if you were sort of hired by, say, Lucasfilm to create a thing to live on a planet. You'd be given a basic description that says, okay, we need a large creature that is a carnivore. And then you'd have to like pump out like 10 different designs in very quick succession and say, right, these are the ideas. Which ones do you like the most? They would hopefully pick one, which you can then do iterations of. They would pick and pick it, do it again. And they would pick of those 10 iterations that you've just done. That one's the best. And you would keep going down until you had the design that they wanted to use and send to their 3D department to turn into a thing to do CG of. But there's also the bit that I'm more interested in is that there are, I have a lot of books on animals and aliens, essentially, where people have used speculative, ugh, speculative biology and evolution to design these things. Things like, you know that in a desert, there are going to be certain traits that you're going to need to have you're not going to have you're not going to find a water-based slime monster in the desert because that's just stupid likewise you wouldn't find a fire elemental underwater because that again is very stupid unless there's a very specific reason why it's it's not going to naturally occur and so a lot of the books i have there's things like, you know, Man After Man is a classic one. For me, I'm, tr I'm trying to, because this is something I would actually like to do more of, just in general as a hobby, and just to do more as, as streaming things. It's like, we start a stream and just say, right, we're going to pick two things, and we're going we're gonna to fucking design something. That would, be, that would be really nice if I could get the skills up. So like in this case, we've got a sheep and a bison. So what if sheep but bison size is the, the basic premise of this? But it could go the other way. What if bison but sheep size? But it, it would be fun if we could start a thing off and say, right, okay. Let's say, okay, it, it's a mountainside. There are caves, there are rivers, etc, etc. What sort of thing might live up there? I think maybe mountain goats, mountain lions, that sort of thing. And they'd be interesting to try and design a thing that would fit into a world. That would fit into that sort of biome, essentially. I mean, will I ever get to the point where I can do it like properly, like a one a week thing on stream? Maybe. 
but this is just like a one-off. I, I couldn't think of what to play today. And I really wanted to get some drawing done off on this long weekend for it being Easter. And I figured if I'm drawing, I might as well force myself to do it and do it on stream. Because that way, I can't just sit here and stare at a blank page for two hours. Because, you know, it's going to be a bit boring. Although, you know, basically have been staring at the page for the past ten minutes while I've been chatting. <laughs> I need to get better at actually drawing and talking at the same time. So let's get our big, beefy shoulders in here. Let's have a look at how how do sheep's leg technical term how do they leg they have a very straight leg honestly I was tempted to see if I could pick up, um, oh, what was it? The Seb used um, stream avatars and have stream avatars at the bottom. But I wouldn't do that until I'd actually designed some extra stream avatars. So you had, so you had a little bit of, a um, little bit more fun, a little bit more sort of special. Because I know um, Harrowick, the Candle Boy artist, all his avatars are things he's drawn himself. Which is really cool. Again, it would involve me drawing. And the amount of things I have on my head that I want to draw. I don't want to add to that yet. <laughs> I'm still working on my, uh, Mark II model. Which is going to take me probably six months at my normal rate. Right, so it looks like we've got they are ungulates, so they are basically walking on their toenails. I'll eventually get there, yeah. I mean, I'll probably for stream avatars, since it's also going to be another program running. What I'd probably want to do is wait till I've upgraded my motherboard and CPU. I've got a slightly better graphics card, I've got loads of RAM, but the base thing that everything sits on is not the best. So I'd like to sort of upgrade the entire machine, if not just the motherboard and the CPU, before I start adding more things for it to work with. Or possibly get a, a capture card and just like run VTube Studio and stuff from my laptop. So that the processing can be done off the main computer. At least I don't have an iPhone. This is all via all my tracking is webcam. It's a little bit easier to figure out where we are. I mean, it is a. I'm considering as well this was my first attempt at live 2D rigging. It's not terrible. It could be so much worse.
to put this on a new layer. Oh, hang on. Okay, that's actually, it's off the main thing, so I can just delete that. I can scribble that off when I'm, I'm ready. Do they have the big shoulder blade up here? We'd have a fairly chunky spine because this is a this is a big beast. So we would need to have a decent amount of back support. And then it would have a relatively sizable chunky hip. And then the rest of it just overhang down because it doesn't need the support. Probably the ribs. Of under there. Like I say, when I said this was going to be messy, I wasn't. I wasn't joking because I. I have no idea what I'm doing. That was one of that was one of the things that was stopping me from doing it, and then I just said, you know what, screw it. I've got to. If I'm gonna do it, I've got to do it. Because I was originally gonna start streaming in 2020. That's when I started picking things up. I got like a snowball microphone, and I was like, okay, that's cool. I, I, you know be a VTuber and all that. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't have money to buy an avatar. I kind of put it aside for a while. Forgot about it. Went to do it again. I'm like, oh, yeah, still don't have any money. And it took about a year or so before I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it myself. Just just do it, do it myself. No matter how long it takes, just start. Started designing the model, which took about five months of doing like an hour here and there and go through about five different versions before I settled on this design and this color scheme. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I've got a rig it as well, which took another sort of month and a half. Whilst also learning how to rig in this at the same time. So it also depends on, you know, if you're not going to do the VTube bit, you'll probably have to run better games. So you could just go with PNG Tuber. Because then you just need to have Discord running, really. And just get like a reactive. Yeah, PNG is a lot easier. I mean, Sheep has done it for the past week because VTube Studio has been a pain for him. But it's literally, you just. Get a go to I think Fuji Tech Reactive. Put your reactive PNG in there with the turn with the the active and non and inactive. Join a call with yourself on Discord. And then boom, you've got a PNG tuber on the screen. It only takes as much CPU as just running Discord in general. Whereas VTube Studio. Especially if you're doing tracking via webcam on the computer. The tracking itself takes up a fair chunk of CPU. Which, I mean, I've noticed it a lot when I've been playing things like Kingdom Come Deliverance. When I play that, I have to do PNG mode. I have to, I have to um, track out the Scrunkle PNG. Because if I try running VTube Studio and Kingdom Come at the same time on stream, it's like 20 FPS on the game. If I don't have VTube Studio running, it's 45, 40. So a much better, much better thing to watch, much better thing to play. But 
on PNG is definitely a lot simpler because you just need a photo of you, just a picture of whatever you're going to be. You don't need to get anyone to rig it, which saves money, it saves time. Well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with you saving the money to get a better rig and just starting now to play some extra things. I mean, even if it is literally a case of doing what I've been doing, which is just stream, and as you have the money, buy a new piece to fit in. That, that's all I've been doing. I mean, it's the reason why like, I think it was a couple of months ago, I was just like, I've got enough money now. I'll just buy myself a new graphics card. And then in another couple of months time, I'll be like, right, I now have enough money to get a new motherboard and a new CPU. Then I'll just like redo the whole thing. This is not a beefalo, Bales. This is the sheepalo. It's completely not needed by the person that, you know, if this is meant to be for. But, you know, I'm doing it anyway because I goddamn want to. Right, so now that we've got a very basic skeleton going, let's, um... Get rid of the one over the top of the sheepy now. And sheepy can get shrunk back. It, it originally was a bean. Because you'd be surprised how many things, when it comes to art, can be started with a bean. Like, would you like a face? Well, here's a bean. Here's a face. Would you like a kidney? Here's a bean. Now it's a kidney. Would you like a xenomorph? Congratulations, you have a xenomorph from a bean. Bit of a squidgy bean at the end, but nevertheless, it was a bean. There's a reason why I think one of um, Proko's videos for like starting art was learn how to draw a good bean, essentially. And it was for figure drawing, because a figure is essentially a bean. Do that, you add a head on top, you've got some legs, you've got some arms, and boom, you've got a person. Unfortunately, the rest of this bit is is unlikely to work with beans. I don't think I can do um, a bean shoulder, for example. Hey, duck. Well, so since this thing's heavy, it's going to need some fairly chunky feet. Proportions don't seem quite right on this. Let's get rid of that bit. Especially now that we've got the skeleton to work with. We'd have our fairly chunky essentially ankle oh that's the point I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking the wrong I'm because that would be the wrist and that would be 
can we... Move some of these things up a little bit. Gonna need a little bit of extra room. But that foot is not gonna be there. Probably gonna be closer to down here. a bit more of a close look on oh, why did I have to find like the lowest resolution side buffalo view let's um can I get a bison skeleton view I've noticed a big problem about having to take my glasses off to draw. I can't even read what I'm typing. There we go. Bison skeleton side view. Let's have a look at what the bones look like. Oh, that's, that's good. Thank you for popping in. Always love having you popping in, Etsy. Hope working goes better for goes nice and easy for you when there's nothing too, you know, annoying you've got to deal with. I just want a nice, decent resolution. Actual side view of a bison. Oh, that's how the that's how the shoulders are. They're further forward than I thought. Like that looks like a relatively decent size one, I think. Go with that. Yeah, my skeleton is definitely off. Mainly because I've m missed on the bones on the legs. But the rib cage, the pelvis, and the back bit aren't that bad. And the, the back part of the spine also matches. So that's, that's actually... I'm, I'm pretty happy, to be honest, that just by looking at that, I got a relatively close approximation. But yeah, the big thing is where we've got the two joints per leg rather than the one that I'm used to thinking of. Because like I say, these are ungulates, which means that they, they walk on tiptoes. So we not only have to account for the the elbow and the knee in the legs, we've also got to account for the fact that there's a wrist joint in there as well. So rather than what we've done having it a single straight one like that, what we should have been doing is having it out like that and the same with the front leg 
I'm actually relatively surprised as well. The, the shoulder joint is actually in, in, in the right place. It's just the way the shoulder is structured is a lot different to what I expected because I thought this whole thing was a shoulder plate, but it is not. And this is why you should always use reference. It's not cheating to use reference when you're trying to design things, especially when designing a thing from something that exists. Let nature show you how the fuck it was done. Do not just guess, unless you want to. But just be aware that if you do guess, it might end up turning up shit, like mine would have been if I hadn't you know, gone and looked at it. But I think even, even then, the, roughly, it's the shoulder joint isn't quite where it needs to be. I think the shoulder is actually close to here. Which just seems really weird. Because it means this first bit of the upper arm is just really tiny. And this bit here would is just like a very, very small bone that then goes out to this one back here. Oh, no, no, that's... Now, is that the wrist, or is that just, like... Right, let me just get rid of this entire section, and we'll redo this from scratch. Actually looking at a piece of reference. Right, so this entire chunk here is the shoulder. And then we have the elbow. Then we have the wrist. That makes a bit more sense. Well, right, you can now basically disappear off to oblivion now that you've given us the basics. So we would have our shoulder there and the upper arm to the elbow then we've got this bit which is the forearm which goes to this bit down here which is the wrist which goes down to what would be the, the hoof or the you know, just the fingernails essentially See how um well, even that it's not quite right because it's got the um not erase on the wrong layer. Even that it's this bit is the fingers essentially. And then you've got the fingernail at the end, which is the hoof. So the back one I've got pretty okay, but this one here isn't quite right. Especially since these need to be relatively level. So, you yeah, know, it can walk in a straight line.
that where we thought the knee would be is actually too high up. That would drop down to there. And then we'd have a knee joint here as well. And I'll have to also have to remember as well that this thing is going to be bigger than a buffalo. At least as far as I know, I don't know how tall buffaloes are at the, sh at the shoulder. I know they're big, but I've never seen one in person, so I, I don't know. But this thing is going to be like, let's assume that the person with them is, let's say, five foot tall. They're going to be at least sort of nine or ten foot tall at the shoulder this beast is. So we don't actually have to draw the shoulder bit separately because this is going to be covered in wool. And also, just looking at this, it's actually making me think this is going to be more... I think I'm going to actually sort of like move the... Remove this hoof that was from earlier that was before we fixed it. I think I'm going to tweak how the hooves are, considering the size of these things. They're going to need to have at least you know, a decent sort of thing on the floor. So rather than having it of that like sheep are at least the domesticated ones I'm thinking more shire horse where they have huge hooves to sort of distribute the weight a bit because if if we think about it this way if this thing is going to be huge if it has really small feet that means that all of the weight is going to be on a very small point so if there happens to be a bit of mud on these planes, its foot's just going to go right in there. And then it's going to get stuck, like horses do these days and what and sheep do. And without someone there or another animal there to help it out, it's dead. It wouldn't be able to escape because it happens a lot. I mean, there's a reason why you find things caught in tar bogs for paleontology. Something put its foot in there and then couldn't get out again. But if we increase the surface area of the hoof, it's less likely to go in. It still is possible. So these things, they're going to get to a certain point where they're just too big and they would just like end up getting caught, not being able to escape, being too big, especially if they fall over in the mud. They would be completely doomed. I don't think these things would be able to get up very easily, judging by how big they are. Yeah, I'm thinking we give them. Rather than the little tiny hoof of the sheep, which is very, very small. To be fair, even. Even bisons themselves have very small hooves. I'm thinking with where this thing is going to be in the world. On a large plane. That if it rains, there's not going to be much drainage. There's going to be mud. This thing is going to want to be able to walk properly still. Without falling in. And getting getting caught. So if, like I say, if we give it the show horse hooves. It should make it at least a little bit less likely not entirely impossible but a little bit less un a bit less likely to happen so 
this is going to be a fairly beefy limb as well. Although not, it's more of a lammy leg, but you know. Get rid of this. Hip line now. If we remove the bean from under it and make sure that actually lines up under there, we've got a relatively decent shape of the base. Granted, I'm not giving it a head yet, but you know, it looks like it could possibly, if we take everything else away, and we clean, you know, once it's been cleaned up a little bit. I mean, it's still not there's something still in my head that just doesn't feel right about the fur the, the front leg it just doesn't I, I don't know what it is but something is just i don't know what for some reason my, my brain is not telling me that's a front leg it's telling me it's a giant chicken drumstick maybe i'm just a bit too hungry But, you know, it matches the rough skeleton plan we have. I mean, it might just be that, you know, I need to just add a bit more detail in terms of, like, wool and stuff like that around it to sort of bulk out the leg. Make it a bit more natural than just straight lines or curved lines. But that's something we can work on. So the next we're going to want is I'm actually going to cut the bison image out of this layer. Because we're kind of done with the bison layout now. What we're going to want is the sheep head. I mean, we would we would all love some sheep head, but you know, <laughs> we have a quick drink. Also, I know that people that do this profession they could have done this entire thing within like two minutes because they're just so well versed at it but because I'm having to think about it as I go it takes so long right, how long have we got left on this I've got plenty of time left we've got like another hour and a half left on the on the music so that's not going to run out anytime soon In terms of a sheep head, it's going to want to be a fairly chunky beast. Let's just make sure we've got the... The spine going all the way through so we know roughly where the head will be attached to. This bit here is roughly where our neck joint is going to be. I'm trying to think what sheep skulls look like. 
because if we go by this, we've obviously got the main part of the skull back here. Got the top jaw. Usually an indentation -y bit around here where the ear hole would be through the skull into the to get to the brain. We've got their relatively open jaw because they've had got all the chunky molars in there. But are we going to want to be thinking the same as a domesticated sheep in terms of the skull? Or we want them to make it a bit more beefy, a bit more bulky. But this thing is going to also need to sort of, at the moment, kneel down to eat. Probably would be worth having a look to see what it, what grazing bison look like. But if the sort of the the, the teeth are there, yeah, it can put its head down, so it could probably chew things that are about that height. Which kind of does fit for the plains idea that where this thing is going to be living. We maybe want to sort of like put our neck connection there. No, sheep are. Oh, so their eyes are going to be closer to the side of the skull rather than the front of the skull because they're going to be wanting to look for all directions. Granted, these are also probably going to be a herd. They may be not as necessary. You know what? I probably should have done this in red on the other layer considering this is the skull part of it. I've put that on the wrong one. There we go. Oh, no, I could have. There we go. Also, get rid of this bit that's on the. The sheep, so you can see the skull a bit more. Hey, Marla. Indeed, big sheep. Megalobis titanus. Never existed before until I, you know, duped it onto a page. I am going to need return to reference images. Um, no, I've already got a side in there. I wanted to type in skull. There's probably something closer to this that would be after. Uh, 
And let's copy that over for another bit of reference. And that way we can flip it to be the right direction as well. Yeah, the nose actually um it looks like the skull actually sort of goes more like that and the end of the nose is just soft tissue so rather than what we've got here It would sort of be more pointed like that. At least if we're trying to keep the rock shape of the underlying things. I said this is essentially an ex just extremely large sheep living on the plains of insert name here that I don't remember. Hi Ginger, I'm drawing a thing from your D&D &D world. And sadly, I am awake, unfortunately. <laughs> no, I, I was just asleep on the road. I was not caught like that, like that thief or anything like that. Yeah, you 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 know the thing you and Wooly have been doing the past couple of um, streams, where you've been sort of working on your on your um, big world. Remember that joke I made about um, Ovis Titanus being on the planes. Meet Ovis Titanus, or the upgraded name, which is Mega Megla Ovis Titanus, which just means big fucking sheep. I'm using an American Bison for reference because this was the, remember, it was in the last one you did. You'd done the giant, the, right, let me picture in my head. So the eastern continent, the northern area where you had all the dragony bits, you had a forest and then plains next to it where I said you're going to need a large herbivore. And I meant large herbivore. And in my head, when I mentioned that, I was thinking, imagine sort of an, a bison slash aurochs, but a sheep. And so I'm like, okay, we'll work with that. We'll start with bison and sheep as reference. And we'll see if we can make something that looks at least vaguely like a thing. And they went with bison because they're obviously they live on the plains and they're large herbivores. So they've got a, the same sort of musculature and skeletal structure that I've, I was thinking in my head. And so I just went with that. And we'll see where it goes, quite frankly.
I mean, I've never really done this shit before, so I, I'm I'm pulling all this out out of my my. I mean, I've read books about it, but I've never tried it before. It's been one of those things I keep reading, and going, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that at some point. I'm gonna create a thing at some point, and then I never do." And so I figured, since I couldn't think of what to play today, I would do an art stream, and we would make the big sheep. You've heard of the woolly mammoth. This is the mammoth woolly. So there we go. Uh, top bit of a skull would have. Must be fairly chunky jaw, to be honest, because this is this thing. I mean, the original reason why I said this was because there ha was ha would have to be some reason why the forest just ended and then there were plains. So something must be eating any new growth from the forest. Because otherwise there would be like, a, there would just be a slowly as you went out from the forest, there'd be smaller and smaller trees until you just went to the plain. But based on what I was what I was hearing on the stream. Um, I'm thinking these things are like ten foot, uh, ten foot tall at the shoulder. Because it also, this was the thing I was thinking that would work as because, like I say, since on this continent you had the dragons, the dragons would need a food source. Meet the food source, or at least one of the food sources. There'll be herds of these things going around. And they would be getting predated by dragons. And the dragon is a fairly a fairly large thing, as far as I can tell. So it's gonna need something chunky to eat. So it just it just seemed to fit into not only the area, but it it fits the sort of area it would need to be grazing at. It would fit the whole reasoning why the trees just stopped and then it went to plains. And there wasn't anything in between, like any intermediate area on the map of like shrubland or something. And it would also fill the niche of a thing that the dragons would predate. Listen to me using all these fancy words like some kind of biologist. Yeah, exactly. Because what what would what you would normally expect is you'd have like a tree line, and then you'd have something like shrubs, and then you'd have plains, because the stuff the seeds from the trees would drop down. You'd have small things growing, and then there would be nothing. But the way that it sounded like you had it on your bit is it was literally trees stop plains. So something is stopping trees from taking root here. Something like a large herbivore that's going to start just chewing up anything, any new saplings that start growing, they're going to be delicious bits of food. I mean, I don't understand how it worked in Rohan. I mean, I know on some bits of, um, with Fangorn Forest, there was, I think on one side at least, there was a river. Which at least was a natural boundary. <laughs> yeah, it's essentially it's just like, and the ants are like, oh well we we can't stop them from eating because that they are like a natural they're not an orc. So we can't really stop them from eating. It's just 
what can you do? What can you do when Big Sheep has the munch? Of course, we'd have to. Now, the fun, fun thing to try and work out: Do we want to have the horns sort of going under, like a bison or a buffalo, or? Yeah, because we're obviously both of these sheep, the horns are going down. Or, do we want to have them sort of doing the, the up and curly? Because the up and curly. You know, it would make sense sort of in the same way that deer use them for um, fighting between the males. Having them up and curly like that, they would work a similar way. They could be used as sexual displays. They could be used as dominance displays. Like, I have the bigger horns. I'm in charge. I don't know what the benefit to having the horn down would be. I mean, maybe if there were smaller predators on the plains, so like maybe sort of similar to say like you know pack hunters, like you know wild dogs, that kind of thing. It might be that the horns have grown down over the neck to cover sensitive areas, to make it less likely for the smaller things to be able to get hold of the the large ones. So they'd have to go after the the smaller ones that don't have the horns large enough to cover the vital areas yet which would also help explain why these things get so goddamn big <laughs> hello sheeper yes In indeed um meet the big one i'm just trying to th i'm just Talking to myself, trying to decide whether horn go up or horn go down. It is a difficult choice. There, there are benefits either way. Or, we could go completely weird and have two sets of horns. So we have the one set that goes up. And does the swirly swirly, which is the sexual display. But he could also have a sec second set that comes around that covers all the vital areas. There's nothing saying we can't do both. If that is what would have naturally occurred over the course of the evolution of these things. That one horn split into two. Because the one that had the split horn tended to survive more because of how it was you know it, it had the, the upper horn still for the dominance so it got to breed more often and that the one the lower horn was protecting its neck from other predators obviously other than the dragons can't really stop that but it would at least make it more likely for them to get to adulthood to get to a point where they could breed and pass on the whole split Horn bit of genetics. I'm putting way too much thought into an offhand joking comment I put into Sheep's chat. Let's face it. <laughs> Sheep was just. Yeah, forest and plains go brrr.
We would, of course, need to have our um, little sheepy ears under there as well. I mean, for a first attempt at trying to, like, put together a, a feasible thing that would fit someone else's sort of ideas, it's not terrible. The fact that it's taken me an hour and 20 minutes is terrible. Granted, about 20 minutes of that was me talking to Etsy. And bearing in mind what we started out with, which was this little scribbly bit. This is what I scribbled together. When we were, in, when you were, when, when you and Ginger and Sheeper were talking on stream, I had Clip Studio open. I didn't have the tablet plugged in, so I did this with the mouse. Because on the one hand, it's got our, our big, you know, Megalovis Titanus in there. But also, I figured at some point, those planes are going to get taken over by some kind of intelligent life that would need a beast of burden. And what better beast of burden than big fucking sheep? So as as I was as I was sitting here watching, pretending to work, using my mouse, I scribbled this. A little nomad man or woman, I don't know, it's just a, a hooded figure of indescript race and gender and species and god everything. And then it just has a couple of very large saddlebags. Going from that to actually having something that looks like an animal. Granted, very scribbly, not really, you know, not detailed in any way. It's more than I expected to get done in the past hour, if I'm honest. Yeah, because we've been going through, like, thinking in terms of, like, skeletal structure and actually been thinking about it as we've been going. Yeah, I, I imagine they would still have regular sheep bar noises. It would just be a little deeper because they're bigger. So rather than meh, more like meh. That sort of thing is what I'm thinking of. I don't even know if that got picked up, to be honest, by by the microphone, because sound gates be weird sometimes. It might not have recognised that as a noise. <laughs> Do I have? We know I have a crap ton of the very generic. What, so we've got hell, we've got fur, fur puffy. Not quite what I'm after.
Sadly, I don't. There is not one called Wool. And funnily enough, this is under the grass and foliage section, so. See, honestly, Ginger, that's what I was thinking. In the same way that, you know, in in our world, you've got um, sort of people in Norway that would follow the reindeer herds around. You know, they'd be living a nomadic lifestyle, walking around, following you, know, following. That's the one. The 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 same pe the, the same people. They follow the reindeer herds. Yeah, as, as you know, because obviously this, the place where these were going to be is right near the top of the world. So I'm assuming it's going to go through a fairly chunky winter season. And there will be migration of these things between, you know, the northern and southern part of the plains. And so there would be whoever lived there. Whether it be orcs, goliaths, whatever they would naturally want to follow where the things are. So if they had a herd of these that were going to migrate, they would be naturally nomadic. They would follow them down. They would be helping look after them, milking them. Because these things, good lord, would you get milk out of these things? If they're, if they're like 10 foot tall at the, at the shoulder, these things would have a lot of milk. Although, they would probably also have a, a similar gestation period for, for babies, like elephants, because of the size. So it may well be that, you know, it's a good sort of 10 months. I think, I think it's 10 or 11 months for, for elephants. I can't remember. It might be longer. It's been a while since I've, I've looked into that stuff. Yeah, that is that, what you're thinking, Juju, is pretty much how I was thinking, which is the reason why, in that original sketch, I had drawn them as if they had already been domesticated by a group. Granted, by the size of this, it's probably orcs, but if it was Goliaths, just, you know, increase the size of them a little bit. But because of the size of them, and the strength of them. They would be extremely good pack animals. They'd also be good for food because obviously one of these would probably feed an orc tribe for a week, if not longer. Then you got things like the milk from them. They would have a huge amount of hide you'd get off them, huge amount of sinew. They would work really well as a companion herd for a nomadic culture. And like you say, that unlike things like reindeer, these are sheep. Sheep got wool. So it may well be that, you know, I know that um, the same people, they do things like, you know, they put lichen in the bottom of their cradles for the babies. They wouldn't even need to worry about that because they've got a herd with loads of wool. They could use wool for that. They could also use wool for their clothing if they were for when they need it. There's so many things that this would be able to sort of like add into that little sort of nomadic culture of whatever you dump, whether it be orcs, you know, Goliaths or whatever. And like I said, it, it it's one of those things I this the entire idea of me doing this just literally came from that one little offhand comment of just me saying Ovis Titanus in the chat. And I was like, I'm, I just have to do it now. I can't not do it now that I've made a stupid suggestion.
A pelt might have worked a bit better for it, but never mind. Fur wind. Oh, winter fur's not. That looks a bit more. bison y. So closer to what I'm thinking of. Fluffy fur. No, that. That doesn't. That doesn't work in my head. Fur thin is just. I think what we already used. Like a, a beam. It was like um. I was just giving Woody a laser eye beam because I know he'd love that. Yeah, would have. I'd have to sort of like put in a bunch of work to try and actually turn this into a thing that looks like an actual animal compared to this. Probably something I end up doing off stream for a while because I know that. Um, I think I have done moved creatures. Somewhere. It's just putting a little more effort in to make them look a bit more human. Not human. That's the wrong thing. I'm too tired for this. Look a bit more animal. That's that sort of thing. A bit more, you know, a bit more real. Because at the moment, what we've got is very much. It's just very thick, dark, scribbly line as to get the outline. So what I'd really have to do is take this, and then redo it, but with like thinner lines, a bit more detail. Yeah, try and make it look a bit more natural, but not really thick lines. So, maybe I'll do that next time. Maybe I'll start doing this once a week. You know, Ginger and Sheepa can just say, we need an animal to go here, and I'll be like, okay, let's see what I can bullshit together. Or it may be that, you know, it's just an, another excuse for me to draw animals, which I, I want to do more often, because I... As you can see by this entire thing called animal sketches, I do like drawing me some animals. You know, like, like Angry Gibbon. <laughs> Little Angry Gibbon. But I would like to draw more animals. And I would actually like to get into doing this shit properly, just on my own, but my own fun. Because I do enjoy the whole idea of creating things for a world. It's it's one of those sort of art projects I've had in my head for like years. Of I'd love to just I mean I say years, it has been since I first thought of this, back when I was a snobby, snobby early twenties person, I thought I made this shit up. And then I found out about a few years after that that no, turns out I'm not that smart. Um, this, there's a whole genre of things for this. Evolutionary, speculative evolution is a big thing. And I made, I thought I'd made it up for my dissertation. But alas, I had not. But my dissertation failed. I, I, 
fell out of the, the last year of uni and completely fell apart. So that never actually progressed very far. But ever since then, I've wanted to do more of it, which was the the designing of things. Like I still have one of the the thing I was going to be creating back then was an ant colony. Which, yes, does also match the fact that I played Empires of the Undergrowth. But it was an ant colony that lived on, on lakes. And in the lake. But it was a type of ant that had evolved to be able to use web. So rather than digging tunnels, it made its tunnel. It made tunnels out of waterproof webbing that it would put into the water and so there would be entire lakes that looked like they were covered in silk because they were and underneath that layer of silk was a huge ant colony in the lake just feeding off it But that was one of the main things I was... Yes, I played Empires of the Undergrowth. <laughs> it's one reason why I, I like ants. Ants are cool. Depends on the species. I think the, the one that I was thinking of... I think it would have been... The, I think the, the term you're after I think is Super Colony. Which is what... Depending on the size of the lake they tried to inhabit it would be a, if it's a, a smallish lake it might be that you know the the silk raft only sort of like spread out a few meters into the lake but if that lake had multiple colonies on all the sides and they slowly built inwards they would eventually all combine and have just the entire lake would be them and then they would just like turned into a super colony with like six different queens because between them they would be able to make it so that good old altruistic word you know if if there were six of them all looking after the lake and making sure it was defended from stuff they were all more likely to survive and also it would mean that there's a good amount of genetic transfer that would happen when the nuptial flights would happen. The sort of the, the future queens and the the males would all fly up and would all be able to sort of just hover over the water and yeah, you know, there'd be a, a lot more genetic diversity than what currently happens, which is they tend to all just breed together and then there's not as much evolutionary growth because they don't really intermingle much unless there just happens to be colonies nearby each other. But yeah, that's originally that was what my university dissertation was going to be. Was I remember that, like the entire first section of it was going through biomes of the world and then sort of like describing traits that would be needed to survive in those areas. I mean, I mentioned really early on in this stream, I think it was when it was only Etsy was around. Things like, you wouldn't have a creature that relied on a lot of water being in the desert. Unless, like a camel, it had a very specific adaptation. But most things do not have giant lumps worth of fat on their back in the desert. It's just camels that do that. But then again, they're the only large mammal that roams around in deserts. For the most part, all the mammals are fucking tiny. Because that way they don't need as much water. Because there's obviously not much water in a desert. So the the entire first like chapter or so of my dissertation was was that. And then it was gonna go into the you know, sort of like breaking down, go, okay, we'll pick, say, temperate climate. It's a fairly generic one. We'll pick a thing, an area, a microbiome within temperate, which would be lake. And then we would start thinking, okay, insect based and then sort of like drilling down until we could say, okay, this is an idea for a creature 
that could be designed to fit into a world that wasn't just generic fantasy monster. Which was the, the whole thing was, because obviously I did games design, the whole premise of it was using evolutionary biology to create new things to go into the fantasy genre because I was honestly getting fed up of orcs and elves. I was like, rather than just us having orcs and elves, why not just be able to work out a new creature? Well, that well, that's the thing, Marla. It was, it was more a proof of concept than anything. So it'd be a case of you know, like I said, I thought it would be a proof of concept, but this this is what like fucking Lucasfilm did this shit. I just didn't realize. But it would be, just say, say you've got a, like Ginger and Woody's world, basically what I've been doing today. There is a world, there are continents, there are biomes, there are intelligent races, and there are non-intelligent races. Rather than just saying, well, it's planes. What do we already, ha what do we have in our world that's, that's you know, fitting? So yeah, we could just say, yeah, okay, so it's planes, just stick some bison in there, put some giraffes in there, whatever, you know, just make it very generic. Or, on the other hand, rather than just doing that and keeping it generic, you could go, well, okay, it's a different world. It might have similar animals, but the animals wouldn't necessarily look the same. They would have evolved to be more fitting of the area they were in so in the case of this one that we've been working on today it may well be have yeah, it may well originally have come from something that looked a bit more like our generic sheep in the bottom corner in the bottom right not the bottom left if it, if it descended from the one in the bottom left then that would be amazing and there's probably necromancers involved but i haven't even thought of that one so it may well be that, you know, at some point during the history of the world, the sheep moved up into the plains. And because there was no other animals filling the niche that they were in, they could expand. They could, like, they, they wouldn't have the competition. So at which point they would start diverging... So you'd have some of them that were big beefy ones like this. You'd also probably have some small ones. Because obviously, depending on what else is around the area, you know, if, if there are no mice, you're going to need to have small insectivorous creatures. So over the course of like you know, 100,000 years, it could be that our original sheep in this corner ended up being, you know, having a descendant of this big beefy boy and it also could have just maybe some just like a really little tiny one. Just sort of down here. That's just a little tiny, little tiny mousy sized sheep. But that, that was sort of the premise that I was, you know, it was, it was trying to sort of like think about what the adaptations, what the niches would be in an area. And then designing something for it, rather than just saying, oh, well, we've got mice. Just make it mice. Which I know there's a reason why we do that. It's because it's we have reference for mice. We can just look at a mouse and go, yeah, we know. We can, we can model that. You know, given like half an hour, I could make a model of a mouse in 3D probably. If I can, if I remember how to use the programs, I could anyway. But to me, that's a little bit lazy sometimes it's like because if you're doing a fantasy world especially in the sort of thing that ginger and woolly are doing they're like they're trying to do the whole they're doing the big world they're, they're not just like going oh fuck it let's just it looks kind of like earth does everything's roughly the same we'll just shift a few of the islands around which is what some people would do like i've got a feeling that 
George R. R. Martin probably just flipped Europe upside down or something. Or turned it on its side. I know that one there's one of the big writers basically did that for their world map. They just took what already existed and just flipped it or inverted it or something, and then they said that's that's the world. Which fair enough. You don't have to give a shit about it then. But I say Woolly and Ginger are going from scratch. They designed their island, they've designed the continental drift and all that. Which is cool. It would be a real shame if they just said, after all that work, I'll just put some fucking sheep in there. Just put a horse in there. Yeah, granted, there would be horses probably. There would be sheep, or at least things that build the same role as them. But like, like I said, that's the reason why I tried to make this thing. I mean, assuming that bison didn't exist in this world, but sheep did, or something similar to sheep, this would possibly be a thing that could evolve to be on those planes to do the job that was needed for a large herbivore. Yeah, soldier ants are um, soldier ants are a fun one. Again, I think that depends on the species, because there's quite a few different species that have sort of soldier casts. But I know the um, like the big head ants. They normally don't have the big heads until they start actually needing them. And at which point some of the some of the offspring or some of the larvae get fed specific things that actually make them get the big head. Yeah, I think it's maybe like feed them an extra I th I think it I think that's basically like the the big head ones that it's like before they're fully formed yeah whilst they're still larvae i think they i don't know if it's they just get fed more protein or it's yeah, essentially protein powder i don't know if they get basically fed a bit more extra protein or if there's a specific thing that the queen can produce because obviously royal jelly is a thing so maybe it's a case of they get fed something from the queen specifically or they get more protein or it's a mix of both and then that triggers the hormonal bits in the larvae so that when they are fully grown they've got the big head but yeah obviously big head ants have got you know the big boys you've got leaf cutter ants that have the super mages as well Mwah, sheeper. Mwah. I love me. I love me a sheeper. But yeah, I think I'll. I think I'll call the art a bit there. Because honestly, it, it's like almost midnight and my brain is turning off to the art thing. Uh, so I'll probably have to sort of like... Now that we have like the basic body design, like I say, I'll probably at some point, whether it's on stream or not, maybe it's something to do tomorrow because I'm still off work. It's Easter Monday. Don't have to do work tomorrow. And I'm not streaming tomorrow, so I've got to do something all day. I can't just watch... Oh, okay, I can technically just watch YouTube all day, but... I shouldn't just watch YouTube all day. I should do something more productive. But maybe... You know, tomorrow I'll just sort of like... Crack open the program. And try doing a bit more... Rather than just a side-on view, maybe seeing if I can sort of do a more 3D-ish version like an actual pose for it and give it a bit more depth maybe a bit more like I say a bit more realism make it look a bit more like 
a, like an actual thing rather than just a shitty drawing. I mean, I do have... I, I don't know where I've put it, but I do have a book that is essentially what I've been doing today. And it just gives you a bunch of prompts, which I've wanted to do for a while. And I have thought about doing that as a stream thing. But this just helped give me a bit of a... A bit of a kick to try something new, really. Because normally I'm just drawing from things that already exist. I'm not thinking about how they're really put together. I'm just going... Okay, I know roughly where the bones are. I know roughly what they look like. Let's you know, draw a sheep or draw a cow or whatever's whatever's showing up in the bottom image. In this case, it's the it's the bison. You know this um this place has all manner of um. I mean this this is just the hooved animal section. So I literally just usually go through this and just draw do figure drawing of whatever the animal is that's there which is fine because i still need to get better at that but i do want to do more of this whole sort of like going from scratch sort of trying to piece together a new thing so yeah hope i might, might try doing some more of that tomorrow just off stream having a bit of fun with it really Oh, and I had to say, I had to say I was almost going to go just just as like one of the best parts of this soundtrack turn up. I love the near soundtrack. Yeah, I think for now I'll call it there. Um. Oh, the, the temptation to... No, I, I'm not, I, as much as I would love to raid Mikey, I'm not going to raid Mikey because Mikey is way too clouty for me. He's a, he's a much better artist than I am. Yeah, he makes a living off this shit. I don't. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'll just leave it there. No raid or anything. Unless anyone has... has a person who's online... That would be good to raid. Oh yeah, Marla, that that would be absolutely perfect. I'll raid this ch 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 chiwi one person i'm sure i'm sure they'll love to get raided <laughs> um and i just type in will this actually bring back anything useful not particularly I was hoping typing in Art VTuber would find someone really useful to turn up, but you know, no, it did, didn't. So yeah, I think I'll just call it there then. So, oh, bye bye, near soundtrack. I I love you too much, but it's it's time for you to stop. Oh, highly recommend just list just sitting and listening to the 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 near soundtrack on YouTube. Because the songs are just so goddamn good. The, the, the game's music did not need to go that fucking hard. Especially, like, anything to do with Kaine. Her songs are fucking insane. Okay, so... Don't need to do anything not raiding not doing anything like that so thank you everyone for watching
watching me um, badly make this big fat sheep. And, and attempt to do something different for once. Um, tomorrow is Monday. Technically now, today is Monday. Just went mutt. But yeah, no stream later on. Next one will be tomorrow. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing yet. We might go back to doing Kingdom Come Deliverance. Or I might just, you know, redo the entire schedule and pick something else that's not going to take another five years to finish. We'll see. But until then, I'll say thank you everyone for watching. It's been fun as always. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.